Hey guys, welcome to episode 19 of Pineapple Nuts. I'm Marina, and you can visit me on Instagram and Ravelry at Pineapple Yarn, and you can visit my hand-dyed yarn company at pineappleyarn.com. So welcome back to the podcast this week. I'm really glad that you're here to chat about knitting and yarn and spinning, um, and fiber too, because I've been spinning and I need something to spin, right? <laughs> But I'm so happy that you're back this week, and welcome to all new viewers and to my returning viewers. It has been gorgeous here in central Indiana this week. Um, No, that's not true. It's been gorgeous today. It is beautiful today, sunny. It is just really crisp air. It definitely feels like fall. Um, The sun shining, it's, it's beautiful. Earlier this week, it was raining. It's rained for days, it was gray. Indiana has a lot of gray days. So I will take the sun and the cool air. It's It feels really, really beautiful out. So I am really happy that the weather is finally shaping up and we can all open our windows and enjoy the sun and the fresh air. So it is really nice. So. I've been pulling out all of my knits and kind of looking towards fall and cooler weather to see what we need, what I need to knit, and um, so that's been really fun too. Um, Today I'm actually drinking kind of a chai tea that I really like. It's, It's a spice tea. I'll go ahead and show you. It's from Yogi Tea. It is classic India spice. It's delicious. Um... I do like tea, but I don't like bland tea. (laughs) I don't know if that makes any sense. Um, I really like tea that has body and has a lot of flavor. I'm a coffee drinker, I guess, by choice. So um, if I could, I would drink coffee all the time, but it's not good for me. So I try to, I try to moderate it, but um, this tea has a lot of body it has a lot of flavor and um, it's just really, really warming, spicy. So if you're looking for a really good fall and winter, kind of a cold weather tea, I highly recommend it. It's really good. So let me go ahead and show you what I've been working on this week. The first thing I want to talk about is what I'm wearing and what I have on my dress form. Um, I showed this last week. This shawl is the pattern um, Tales from the Isle of Purbeck. And it was a mystery knit along that I finished, I think, about three years ago. And I had a viewer ask if I could actually show it up close. And so I just I said, yes, of course, it can do that. Um, it is a pretty good size shawl. It is made from 100% Rambouillet. Um, and I will put all details of the pattern and the yarn in the description box below. But here is a picture of it up close. It's a beautiful lace pattern. This is a DK weight yarn, so it um, is a really, really nice weight shawl. It is extremely warm. I think I told you guys last week that I have never worn it (laughs) because I knit it when we lived in Hawaii and obviously this isn't going to get a lot of wear on most parts of the Hawaiian islands. So this is what it looks like up close and out. It's, I mean, it's so large. I can't, I can't hold it all the way out, but, um, yeah, it's a good size. I really, really like it. I love the color. It's uh, the colors matter root, which is really neat. It's naturally dyed. And the yarn, even though it is more of a rustic yarn, it's super soft. I think it is incredibly soft and um, I am looking forward to wearing it when it gets a little cooler. But I could definitely see wearing this maybe when, you know, outside, I think it would be really nice. Um, I don't think that for me personally, I don't think I could wear this, um, inside. It's just, it's really, really weighty. It's quite heavy. So that is that. I hope that helps. So you can see 
um, what the shawl looks like stretched out. And then I am actually wearing one of my favorite shawls. This is my Dotted Rays Fade by Stephen West. And I will show it to you up close too, why not? But um, I think I've worn it several times on the podcast because this is, I think this is my favorite shawl. It is made with a variety of yarns. It's, um, I believe this was the starting point right here. And then it has all these neat eyelet increases and lots of different yarns. And again, it's a really large shawl, but it's not very deep as you can see. And that's my favorite kind of shawl, shawls that aren't very deep, um, but are really long. So I love the colors in this. I was really happy with how it turned out. Um, I want to say that there are four different colors in this shawl. I don't really remember. I'm pretty sure this is my yarn, pineapple yarn in Coral Canyon. Um, let's see, this next color I believe is an experimental colorway by Jinx Yarns. This down here, I don't know, I think this kind of uh, red orangey color, so pretty, it's so saturated. I want to say it's by Koigu and it's, I don't think it has a name, I think it just has a number. And then at the very bottom, I cannot remember the colorway. I know it's by a homespun house. And I will put all, um, all the makers and all the names, again, in the description box below. And I don't know, I mean, if you've gone to my Ravelry page, you know that I am not so great at keeping track of my projects. Um, I love Ravelry. I think it is a really great um, a great site. It's great to keep track of your projects. But for me personally, I just I, I always forget to write everything down. And a lot of times when I am, I'm on my phone and it's just not as easy to use it on my phone and to add projects. I don't know. I need to just get on the computer and type out the projects and type up my notes and do it that way because um, I'd like to keep track of my projects better. <laughs> and I'm sure you guys would like to know um, who the makers are and pattern details and whatnot. So maybe that's one of my resolutions. I need to get better at it. And that's also why I don't have a group for this podcast or my yarn on Ravelry because I don't want to start one and then not be able to maintain it or um, put the time into it. So I'll get there. I'll get there. <laughs> okay, let me go ahead and show you what I have been making. Okay, so I was really excited this week because I actually cast off of my hipster shawl. And I thought about not showing it on the podcast, but I'm going to anyway. <laughs> It's not blocked, but this is what it looks like. I don't even have the strings in. I mean, this is like fresh off the needles. So yay, I'm very excited about it. Very, very excited. It is long, 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 long. Very, very long. Um, I don't really know what it's gonna look like or how large it's going to be after I block it because it's huge right now. Um, one thing I really appreciate about this pattern is that um, Hohi, Hohi Locatelli, who is the designer of this pattern, she actually put instructions for an elastic bind off, which I so appreciated because a lot of times I found with patterns, people don't, or designers, I guess, don't always put a really elastic bind off and so when you go to like really stretch it out maybe maybe I'm just I like to aggressively block things I mean I want to get it like really stretched out um, and yeah it definitely could be me because I I don't like super deep shawls so whatever I'm always trying to really stretch it out and sometimes bind offs aren't um, aren't the greatest but this is uh, yeah, this edge is actually the beginning of each row, and then it would come down and across. 
<laughs> that way. So it, it's a top down shawl and the bind off is actually down here at the bottom and it's, it's fairly stretchy. It'll be good for blocking. I think it'll block out really nice. But um, yes, this is by Hohi Locatelli and the yarn is pineapple yarn in, yes, my unnamed colorway. It is still unnamed. Um, I don't have the skeins. I dyed extra skeins that will be in the shop on a fingering weight yarn. And you know what? I just don't, I don't have them skeined up yet. They're not ready to put in the shop. So um, I'll get there guys, I will get there. But I'm loving this color right now. I'm knitting the throwback sweater in it as well. So um, yeah, I'm excited for this. And this actually, one more thing about this um, shawl. You can really see the textured sections right here and right here. That's showing up really well. I think those are really, really pretty. Um, but at the very bottom, right here there will be little tassels and I'm so excited to put those on that's I think it really makes this sweater when I saw it um, finish for the first time um, when I saw Hohe's and it had all of the tassels along the bottom it was so pretty so anyway enough about that you'll see it when it's blocked hopefully next week I'll get to it and yeah I was like, really excited to bind that off because with the um, Texture Time Mystery Knit Along starting, I think it starts next Friday. So I kind of felt the pressure of getting some things off the needles to really focus on that because you just never know with Mystery Knit Alongs how much knitting there's going to be each week. And I really, really like to keep up with Mystery Knit Alongs. I don't like to kind of like fall behind. So <laughs> anyway, that's the hipster shawl. And let me show you what else I've been knitting. The next work in progress I have, I'm actually keeping in my gray sheep sweater and shawl bag. I think I have some of these in the shop right now. I love them. They're huge and great for larger projects. But this is my throwback sweater. This is a pattern by Andrea Mowry, and I think it's called Just the Throwback. So, the throwback. <laughs> I'm calling it the throwback sweater, and actually it's going to be a cardigan. So, I have altered the pattern. You can see right here where the pattern is off a little bit. That's where I will steak it, or cut it up the center. And I decided to do this because, frankly, I don't feel like purling color work. Um, I'm pretty, I'm pretty comfortable with color work. I just don't feel like purling it. So, um, decided to go ahead and steak it. I put in. I'm just gonna go ahead and explain what I did. Um, I actually inserted seven. I believe it's seven rows. I better check. Nope, I only inserted five rows. So number three, I guess, the middle stitch out of those five, is, that's exactly where I will cut. I am using instructions from Tin Can Knits, just called Steak. So if you do a Google search, just search for Tin Can Knits Steak. Um, they have an excellent tutorial. It's very clear. Um, I think the one thing, I don't remember if they have this in their tutorial, I am going to stitch on a machine before I steak. And so I'm going to put stitches in on either side, let me show you, on either side of this line where I'm going to cut. I'm just going to stitch it just to give a little extra security to the stitching only because uh, most of these yarns that I've used on the color work are not super wash, or they are super wash, excuse me. So with a non-super wash wool, I mean, traditionally that's what you would use for color work because they kind of grip onto each other, grip onto the stitches next to each other. Um, with super wash, it's slippery, it can unravel really easily. And so just to provide a little extra security, that is what I am going to do. And then also, um, 
someone messaged me on Ravelry and asked me how I figured out what to knit, you know, what what I substituted, did I have to change any charts? Not at all. This is a very basic, basic, straightforward pattern. If you have not done color work before or you're just not super comfortable with it, I don't think this would be super challenging. Or I should say the pattern is written, probably wouldn't be challenging. Um, the only difference I'm doing with this are the rows that require being purled. I just continue to knit around, just knit. I mean, because that's all I'm doing here is just knitting around and around and around. And so the rows that say go back with pearl, I just keep knitting around. Um, the color work chart in itself is very intuitive. And so there, you will know when you see the chart and when you see the pattern, what colors need to go where. Um, it's very intuitive and a very, very fun pattern so far. So I am very close to the bottom here. I'm not sure how long I'm going to make it. I need at least several more inches. I do know that this um, superwash part will grow. It will stretch as I block it. So I want to be mindful of that because I don't want it too long. Um, I'm trying to think what else I want to say about this. Oh, I do want to address um, what I did here in the sticking area. Basically, someone had asked me this, so I want to um, just address this as well. In the color work portion that I added, the sticking area, I kind of continued the pattern. Um, it's not exact as you can see, but what I did, you can see this. So right here, this orange line, this gray line right here, that's where I'm going to cut. And I, in the sticking area, I kind of just either continued the knitting pattern, the color work charting pattern, or I used those stitches as an opportunity instead of having really long floats in the back. Um, I, for example, knit with the background color, this main color here, but then just went ahead and put, did one stitch in the, um, I guess the accent color, just so I wouldn't have a float from here all the way to here. And then I also know where I need to stick it, where I need to cut. So I don't think that there is a right or wrong answer or right or wrong way to do it in the sticking area. Um, again, like this line right here, that's where I'm going to cut. So just, I used it as an opportunity first, so I didn't have very long floats. And secondly, so I would know where to cut. So I hope that makes sense and um, gives a little more clarity. Again, I'm not an expert. I'm just kind of figuring out as I go along. <laughs> so this is fun. I hope to get the body of it done this week and start on the sleeves. The final project I'm working on is with the first hand spun yarn I made. And I, I have showed this on my podcast several weeks ago. Um, this is the hand spun yarn I made from the Nora Rainbow Roll, which is um, kind of a big roll. I think it's called a plate actually of um, pencil roving. So very, very thin roving. I made this on my drop spindle before I purchased my spinning wheel. And it was really fun. It was tedious on the drop spindle and heavy because it was about 100 grams of wool. So that is a lot, but I am knitting just pure garter stitch for rows and rows and rows. This is garter stitch all the way. Um, I was inspired by a pattern that popped up on my YouTube recommended, and it is by Peony and Time, and it's called the Astoria Cowl. And what basically what it is is a, it's a a long, long, chunky, like super chunky, more than this, um, a long scarf. And then what she did 
is she wrapped it around once and then the ends actually come together at a right angle like this and then have buttons, big chunky buttons at the bottom. And the way that she styled it was so cute. And I thought, you know what? This yarn would be so perfect for it because I have a lot of it. And um, yeah, I just thought, I don't know. I just thought it was the perfect yarn for this pattern and perfect pattern for this yarn, really. So that's what I've started on. Um, my, I, I can't remember exactly her pattern, what it required, but for mine, I have cast on 32 stitches and my needle size, let's see, this is a US 9. I'm a loose knitter across the board, and so normally this would require a size 10. Um, yeah, so I'm really excited about that, and I'm just noticing everything is coordinating today. I have this color, I have this, I am wearing this, I feel like they're all the same colors. I'm even drinking tea that has those colors. I don't know what's going on. It's all fall colors, right? <laughs> but um, this will be really nice um, for the cold weather. It's very warm and squishy and it's very soft too. I wasn't sure how soft this was be this would be. Um, first of all, because Noro to me isn't the softest yarn. I don't know. Maybe you guys think that too. But there was also vegetable matter in the roving as I was spinning it. So I'm still picking out just little bits of straw and all kinds of things. Um, but that's kind of what you get with Noro. I mean you may have vegetable vegetable matter in your yarn or your wool, but you have these amazing, amazing color transitions. And I just think this is really neat too because this is a two-ply yarn. And so um, it is still making just a beautiful kind of an ombre or gradient, I guess it's a gradient effect. Even though I plied it together and I'd had no sort of color management or anything. I mean, I tried to weigh and spin, you know, smush half of it onto my drop spindle so I could get a pretty even um, ply so I could use all of the yarn. And I did a pretty good job. So that's this. I am excited and I'm not in any kind of time constraint with this. I'm just going to knit a few rows every day and then eventually it'll get done. So that is what I have been knitting this week, but I do actually have a finished spinning project. This was um, from a braid of, I think it was 100% superwash wool from Jinx Yarns. The colorway was Land of Glaze, and I think it turned out pretty nice. I spun this on my Kromsky Minstrel, my new spinning wheel, which I love. And I could just spin all the time on it. And so could my kids. <laughs> I gave them some wool to play with this week so they didn't get into my projects. And um, after I'd finished this, you know, empty wheel and so um, was just teaching them how to draft and whatnot. They do have draft spindles, um, but some like spinning all more than others. So what are you gonna do? But um, yeah, this turned out really pretty. I tried to draft this or I guess draft it a little thicker than I have been. I've been trying to make super thin yarns, but this is more of like a I don't know, DK weight or something. I, it's it's not even. I mean, there are definite like thick and thin places, but um, I'm pretty happy how this went. I I was spinning this very quickly um, in front of the TV. I wasn't trying to be a perfectionist with it at all. I just really wanted to spin, and so I think it will be really nice knit up. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with it yet. Um, yeah, one thing I do need to purchase is a, I guess like a yarn gauge or something where you wrap the yarn around 
And then you can tell how many reps per inch it is because I don't, right now I'm just kind of guessing the thickness of the yarn and that's not really how it works. <laughs> I, I want to be able to spin and be able to choose patterns accurately. Um, yeah, so I'm still working on that. It's all a learning curve, right? But anyway, super happy about this yarn. It's very squishy and soft and um, yeah, excited to knit with it. And while we're on the topic of spinning, I actually have a fiber acquisition. Um, last week I was, after I was talking about Rambouillet, I was just feeling this yarn and feeling this knit and thinking about how soft this yarn is. I mean, for a non-superwash wool, this is so, so soft. And so I did a quick internet search about, or for Rambouillet fiber, and I came across Spun Right Round, which is a, um, she's a yarn dyer, obviously a fiber dyer as well. This is 100% um, 100, 100 Rambouillet. I'll go ahead and show you these cute, this is a cute sticker. She just has the cutest logo. That was in there too. Rambouillet, four ounces. And I just am loving these colors. They are going to be so pretty. I know that when I spin with this, I'm realizing that my colors or the I should say the resulting yarn always ends up being a little more pale. I'm not sure why, but I think this will be very, very pretty and versatile. There are so many colors in this. I think it will be very pretty, but it is the softest fiber. It's, um, it's interesting because it's not merino soft, but it's very soft nonetheless. It's not, I don't feel... It doesn't feel like I'm giving anything up in terms of softness, if that makes sense. So I'm very interested to spin with this. I've never spun with Rambouillet and it will be really fun. So I was happy with that purchase and I am going to have to keep an eye out for more Rambouillet and keep an eye out in her shop. There were a lot of sold out braids that I really, really loved. So um, I'd recommend checking her out. She has some really pretty colorful braids and yeah, I was really happy with this. So that is what I've been working on this week and I have been dyeing yarn and getting some things ready for my shop update, which is this Friday, September 28th at 8 p.m. Eastern time at pineappleyarn.com. So let me show you what will be in the shop this week. Um, I have some free stocks of tonal colors. I have some sock sets and I have some really pretty colorways on my bulky base. So I'm just going to start with my bulky base. Um, I have been wanting to knit with this for a while. Um, it is incredibly soft. Uh, single ply base and I think this is going to make the fastest softest cutest winter hat and so I dyed a few colorways up because I can't decide what color of hat I'm going to knit with <laughs> but I have some really pretty um yeah I have some really really pretty colors so this first one is called Sunkissed, and it is a mix of uh, pale, these are all really, really pale colors, pale yellows, pale oranges, and then an aqua, and it has really, really nice tonal speckles in it. This would make, I think, a very beautiful, um, bright but um it's almost faded it's called sun kissed so um it's nothing too in your face as far as the neons but um i think it'd be really pretty 
if you had maybe a turquoise. I'm always thinking of like, okay, what clothes is this going to coordinate with or coats or whatnot. This would be really pretty if you had a turquoise coat or like a coral co colored coat because um, these colors would just work really well with that. So this is Sunkissed. And then I have this one, which is Electric Beach. You guys probably have seen this one. This is one of my classic colorways. Um, I love this uh, colorway because it's very saturated. And actually this uh, batch was incredibly speckly, incredibly saturated. And I really, really like it. So this is definitely uh, one of my favorites this week. I also have Mango Tango. This was originally one of my sock set colorways and I have dyed this on a few different bases this week. It is a blend of warm pink, neon orange, not too neon, just you know kind of a pale neon, and then we have some pops of super, super pretty yellow speckles as well as some other tonal speckles. So I think this is so cheerful for winter and for cold weather. Um, this is definitely one of my favorites. I'm gonna say all of these are my favorite. I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to say that anymore because I only dye yarns that I really like and dye colorways that I like. So I like this one. <laughs> And then I haven't dyed this color for a while. This is called Proud as a Peacock. It is a beautiful, saturated um, mix of all different kinds of blues and greens and purples. And I love this for its saturated colors. It is a, it's layer upon layer upon layer and um, you can really tell because this yarn just glows, especially for a bulky base. Sometimes bulky bases, it's not, they just represent colorways a little differently than say a fingering weight yarn. I think fingering weight yarns a lot of times when you dye them and it's a, kind of a multi-layered colorway, they really glow. I mean, they, they just, they shine and they glow, they're beautiful. A lot of times when that's done on a bulky, you just don't get that uh, depth so much. I don't know if that makes any sense, but I think this one um, is just, it just really shines and glows even though it is a darker colorway. So really happy about this. And then the last one is another autumn colorway. It is, um, I guess it's similar to my apple picking colorway. This is called Falling Leaves. And um, I wanted to make something more of like an in the orange family. This isn't orange by any means. It's not completely orange, but um, a lot of times with fall colors, they're very saturated and dark, and that's not really my aesthetic. Though I do like pops of dark colors, don't get me wrong, because I do love like my Sip Sip Knit. I love that colorway, but um, this is kind of what I like for fall. I like the brighter colors. They're very warm and some nice speckling. And this color is just, I just really love this color right now. Um, I may have to dye some tonals in that because that to me is kind of like my kind of fall. It's bright, but it still is that super intense warm color. So this is called Falling Leaves. I will have this on my bulky. And then I'm also going to have sock sets with it too. So let me show you my sock sets. This week I'm going to have four different colorways in my sock sets and let me just go ahead and explain them in case uh, in case you don't know what they are. So my sock sets are two skeins of yarn, 
One is a 50 gram fingering weight yarn, and then the other is a 20 gram mini in a coordinating color. And so I developed these because I don't use an entire 100 gram skein when I knit socks. And I usually have about half left over. I have about 50 plus grams left over, even with the heels, toes, cuffs, everything. And so I developed this because I know a lot of you don't want to buy an entire 100 gram skein just to have 50 grams left over after you knit a pair of socks. Though you can make a hat out of the rest, there are different things you can knit, you know, a small accessory. But um, I just did these because I thought that they would be a really cute gift, first of all, for if you're in a swap or for a knitter in your life. Um, and then it's just fun to have kind of a pairing that you know will look great as a pair of socks. So this is Sunkissed and I dyed an aqua um, accent to go with that. Again, this is just some really pale neons and some really pretty blues over the aqua. I like this because it's not in your face neon, but it's still really bright. It's kind of a faded effect. Um, that's why it's called Sunkissed. But I really love these speckles down here. I don't know if I can get these. They're just so pretty neon, some little neon speckles. So this is Sunkissed. And then I will have the Proud as a Peacock colorway as well in the fingering weight. Um, the accent color for this is actually still on the drying racks, but the mini that will go with this is a very, very deep saturated purple. So this will be just a stunning pair of socks, very saturated and um, yeah, love this. I think this is such a pretty colorway. I will also have a new colorway and I'm trying to think what my daughter called this. I think she called it Sprinkle Splash. <laughs> my kids are always coming up with, oh mom, do you have another name for, do you have a name for this colorway? I think you should call it, you know, Flying Unicorns and Rainbows. That's, it's usually something like that. But this one was Mom, you should call this Sprinkle Splash. So I think I might just call it that. It's very, it's a very, very lighthearted colorway full of really pretty pinks, a couple of different pinks in there, some really great aqua speckles and other colored speckles in here. So I love this and it will have a pink in this color family, a pink mini to go along with it. Those are on the drying racks as well. So I decided to let them dry, but yeah, I'm loving this. Um, my inspiration for this colorway was um, something that I think my little girls would like. I think that they would love socks made out of this. So um, yeah, that was my inspiration for that. So it's only fitting that they would pick the colorway name, right? <laughs> but the um, the fourth sock set I will have is my Falling Leaves. And so this is the pairing here. I am just loving this colorway so much. I really love it. And then I was um, kind of working toward making a really nice warm kind of a russet red color to go with it and I am loving this color it has um, kind of some brown undertones obviously red but it's a very very warm red and I think it looks nice with this it's not an exact color for this but I didn't want it an exact color I wanted it to be a nice complementary color but um, not the exact color. So that's kind of what I like to do with my sock sets. I don't always, normally I don't like to put an exact color. I don't know why, I guess just to kind of mix it up a little bit, but um, yeah, love this for a pair of gorgeous fall socks. This just is kind of speaking to me right now. Love that. I really need to 
maybe I'll put that on the list for this next week to diatonal this color because I think that is super pretty. So those are my sock sets that I have. And then I dyed up um, Electric Beach, which I showed you um, on the bulky. This is on fingering weight. And as with the bulky, this one is incredibly speckly. I don't know what, no, I do know what happened. I thought, oh, I'll just put some extra speckles on it. It was, I was having an extra speckly day. It wasn't a mistake. I purposefully put more speckles on it than I normally do. But um, I will have this on my Lonnie sock base, which is my 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon base. I have it on this and I believe I will have it on BFL as well. I decided to put a few BFL skeins in the shop this week uh, just because it's getting cold and it's really nice to have a nice pair of BFL socks and put it into a shawl or something. It's just a really nice, um, a nice base, very wooly, very strong and very warm. So this is Electric Beach. And then I also dyed it up on Mango Tango, which is a very, very bold, bright colorway. This is on BFL, and I believe I will have it on BFL and my Lonnie base. But um, one thing I love about this, and this is why I wanted to show you the BFL on this, is because um, it's just so bright. You know, a lot of kind of woolier yarns, I don't know if it's because they, a lot of times they're not super wash. I think this is a super wash. You know what? I'm not exactly sure. I'll put it down here. <laughs> I'll let you guys know if it is or not. Um, but they just don't take bright colors and speckles as well as their, you know, standard superwash merino counterparts. But I think this is incredibly bright and fun. This is just super, super cheerful. I think this would make a, something absolutely gorgeous. This would be beautiful in a fade. So um, yeah, so that's that. And then I will have some restocks on some of my tonal colorways. So I have um, Midas, which is a, it's lighter than my honeycomb colorway kind of still in the same color family, but it's just a paler version of it. I will have Iceberg, which is a incredibly clear, bright, cool blue. Still pale, not, uh, not a dark color, not super saturated, but it is very pretty. I will have Dusty Sage, which is a classic color here. It's a mix of some um, blue greens with, I think it has some, you know, I ha think it has some kind of gray undertones. It looks like dusty sage if you've seen the plant. Um, that's why I named it that. So this is beautiful. Love this. It works with so many different colors. And um, if you're into more subtle colorways or if you have a pattern that requires, um, I don't know, just some different, I'm trying to think of the word like cables and things like that, or some like patterned socks, that's what I was thinking of. This would be really, really pretty because it wouldn't take away from the actual pattern. So that's Dusty Sage. I have a new colorway I'm calling Lemon Curd, which is a really pretty yellow. It's kind of getting blown out right here, but um, this is really beautiful, beautiful semi-solid colorway. I have one of these yellows in a texture time kit, so decided to add some of this to the shop. I am also going to be restocking Candy Apple, which is, it's not a super saturated red, I don't have a lot of like incredibly saturated deep colors just because that's not really my aesthetic, but this has kind of some pink undertones. It is a really, really pretty red. 
This coordinates well with my apple picking colorway. I believe I have some of those in the shop, but love this color, it's so pretty. I have a slate gray, which is a gray with blue undertones. Again, this would be very pretty in a pair of pattern socks. And then the last one is sapphire, and I actually had these two together. I thought these were really pretty together. Yeah, this is sapphire, very pretty navy, and yeah, I thought those were really pretty, but that's what I will have in the shop this week. I have currently in the shop a few more Texture Time Mystery Knit Along kits. If you are interested in that, the Mystery Knit Along is the 2018 um, MCAL by Stephen West. The pattern's available on Ravelry, and it starts next Friday, I believe. So um, if you're interested in that, I've actually put together a few kits so you don't have to put one together. Um, I actually have a silk mohair blend yarn for the contrasting color number four. It is gorgeous, gorgeous, beautiful sheen. Um, I know some people are going to use a lace weight mohair silk, uh, either held single, single or double with the shawl, but this um, base I actually purchased especially for these kits because it is very, very similar to the yarn that is recommended in the pattern. So it's a fingering weight pattern. It adds tons of sheen and texture to the project. So I hope if you are going to do that mystery knit along, you don't have any yarn picked out, just go ahead and look at the kits in my shop because I do have a few left and they are gorgeous. I haven't decided yet what I am going to, to make. Um, I have one colorway in the shop that's a little more subtle. It is, um, I can't remember what kit number it is, but it has some kind of darker colors, a little more subtle. I'm kind of leaning towards that. I'm not sure yet though. I. I'm sure I will decide right before the, the knit along begins and be hurrying, like caking up my yarn. <laughs> I always tend to do those things last minute, which is fine. But um, yeah, I do have those kits in the shop right now if you're interested. But um, other than that, that's what I'll have in the shop this week. And again, my update is this Friday, September 28th at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, so I hope to see you there. But other than that, that is it for the podcast this week. I really appreciate you joining me. I, I know how valuable your time is, and I so appreciate you chatting with me today, and I love talking about yarn. I love talking about knitting, obviously. So if you liked this podcast, I would love if you would click like, and subscribe to the podcast. Um, so for the last thing that I wanted to talk about, I actually just hit 1,000 subscribers. So thank you to all of you who have subscribed to the podcast. It is such a cool milestone to hit, and um, I don't always check my subscriber numbers. It's just not something that's um, super important to me, I guess. Um, because I really just enjoy doing the podcast. So as long as there's one, hopefully a couple people who enjoy the podcast, like that's all I really care about. So um, yeah, I actually received a notification from YouTube that said I had a 1000 subscribers. So what? That's awesome. I'm so excited. And um, so I just wanted to thank you guys in a special way for subscribing and Kind of sticking with me as a newbie YouTuber. So um, I'm going to be hosting a giveaway and I'm not really sure what's going to be included in the giveaway. It will obviously include yarn, but I want to put a few other little goodies in there. So I will show you guys next week what will be included in the giveaway. Um, but if you're interested, I would love for you to just leave a comment below and tell me something that you like about the podcast or something that you'd like to see in the future because 
Um, I'm doing this podcast for you guys, and I love to touch upon things that you're interested in. So to enter the giveaway, just leave a comment below, and I will choose one next week. I'll choose a winner next week. So anyone can enter as long as you're subscribed and you leave a comment below. It doesn't matter where you live in the world. I'll send it wherever. So as long as you receive mail, I'll mail it. So um, again, thank you guys so much. I'm, I'm really humbled by that. And I never thought that I'd have a thousand people who actually received this on their YouTube account every, uh, every week when I put one out. So thank you guys so much. And um, until next time, I hope you have an awesome day. Bye guys.